talking about writerly stuff. My sister would be writing this down. My sister would be writing this down, but my sister would be torturing. <laughs> She had one of those diaries, you know, the kind with a little lock and key. And then I got one with a little lock and key. And then I found out that every key fit every lock uh, ever manufactured. I was like, well, this is good. That's really the power. That was power until she caught me. And then I really saw the power unleashed. Okay. One of the things about writing or being in the arts is you can't be afraid of making mistakes. You know, this whole idea that everything has got to be perfect the first time out, well, you just have to get over that little issue and, and realize that you're going to make mistakes, but you're so smart that you learn from all those mistakes, that the mistakes themselves are your teachers. And so um, I thought I would just show you some ghastly mistakes and talk about the content and structure at the same time. So um, I've always been interested in children's literature. I love children's literature. You know, you can take a, a good look at it right from the, the early going, you know. Brown bear, brown bear, what do you see? I see a red bird looking at me. Red bird, red bird, what do you see? You go into the hungry caterpillar, you know, and everybody loves that, the grouchy ladybug, you know. And then you move into like hop on pop, go dog, go, you know, and then you start doing your Dr. Seuss stuff, right? You read all those green eggs and ham, cat that, you know. And then you go into uh, where the wild things are, and Curious George, and Eloise. I always loved Eloise at the plaza. In fact, if you go to the plaza, they still have the portrait of Eloise there. They didn't take that out, even though they redid the plaza, which I thought was criminal. And then, um, you know, the Madeline books, and then, you know, those little chapter books, like the Frog and Toads, like those four little chapters, you know, you move up into those, those Minarak books and Danny and the Dinosaur books. Then you move up, of course, into the shorter novels, like James and the Giant Peach, No Flying in the House, you know, Abel's Island, Cricket and Times Square, which is still a fabulous classic, you know. And all those sort of things. So, so you are, let's say you're that kind of person. You love that kind of stuff. So I did. So I started writing picture books when I was in college. And, uh, but I was timid. And so this is called A Visit to Grandmother's House. This is how dull this book is. So see this little girl? She went to the grandmother's house. She brought her a plant. They dusted the plant. They talked to the plant. They named the plant. They plant the plant. And the little girl goes home. That's the whole story. Oh, pardon me for a moment. Nice to meet you, Jack. And uh, so I, you know, I was just like, I was just like, just trying to take it easy on that. And what happened is, is even though we had some content, um, and I had a little bit of structure, it just wasn't that interesting. And I'll explain why. Jack, hi. Nice to meet you. If you get hot with that coat, yeah. just take it Sorry. off and we can put it around the corner. Not a talk to me, but I think. And I just started talking, so oh, okay. you, haven't missed, you haven't missed but a moment. First I started talking about stuff, notebooks, pens. And now we're just talking about content and structure and right. organizing your stories. So, the biggest problem with this book? Well, one, one of the biggest. Visit to grandmother's house. What was I thinking? Who buys the most books? Grandmothers, right? I'm like, oh, yeah. So I put the commerce in front of the art, and what do you end up with? A really bad <laughs> you know. And so you're not true to yourself, right? You know, if you're going to have some sort of sense of aesthetics, what is it that you're doing? You're not thinking about selling, you're thinking about creating. So then uh, I needed some action, because that book had no action. So this little boy's fishing in his bathtub for his pet alligator that went down the drain. And then he got stuck in the drain. And then I had like 20 pictures of this. And then he ends up in the sewer. I remember I took that to the publisher. And he, you know, we were talking about beginning, middle, end. Problem, action, solution. And he went, where's your solution? I was like, in the sewer. He's like, no. <laughs> you know, try again. I wrote a whole book in pig language. It's all in oink, all 16 pages. Oink, 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 oink. Various oinks, various fonts of oink. <laughs> and uh, this is page four. That's the pig's uh, friend, Bonnie. You wouldn't know that. All oink. And then uh, the last page, one big oink. And, uh, I, you know, that, no, that book didn't go. And then uh, I didn't do that again. These, uh, 
cats want to uh, be famous, they join a flea circus, that doesn't work out. Uh, these penguins are tired of working in the fish packing plant, so they uh, put all their money together and they buy a bowling alley and then they become the pins and they're hitting the head with a ball all day. I mean, what was I thinking? Okay, children, this is what life is. <laughs> One unrelenting ball to the head. No, that didn't work out. That was my issue, not theirs. And then, uh, and then these are the loneliest books in the world. They're marching out of the library in the middle of the night because nobody's been reading them. And uh, everybody says, well, who needs books? We don't need books. And they all get really dumb from not reading. Like this dog doesn't know why his bike doesn't go forward. And people wearing shoes on their head and so on. I did 12 failed books first. Was, and I took each one to, in Boston with three publishers, and each one of the 12 was rejected to my face, right. like right there, right on the other side of the desk. But great rejections, great rejections. They would point out the flaws in the character. They would point out the flaws in the beginning, middle, and end. They would point out the flaws in the structure. <clears throat> so that each time you would leave the office, you would there was something to take with you. You know, you walk out of there going, okay, I won't do that again, or I'll improve on that again. And it took 12 of those attempts, and I never have felt badly about that, because I learned so much. So, um, on the 13th attempt, oops, not that way, this way. So there's one of those little rules well, they call it a rule, it's not really a rule, it's a preference, called write about what you know about. And so I didn't have a cat, so I went to the newspaper and I went to the used pet section. And uh, it was Harvard University was giving, giving away a cat. And I said, well, I might as well get a smart one. So I got, uh, <laughs> I got a cat from Harvard. I went over to Harvard and got this cat. And uh, it turned out to be a wicked, you know, just a wicked cat. You know, it's like psychopathic. <laughs> and uh, so I wrote Rotten Ralph, and uh, they liked that. that. You know, this is the book that I got published after all those books. So at that point, then I was really starting to, you know, look at books. Like, this is what you end up with. Uh, and I'm going to skip through here because I want to get on to something else. But this is actually a 16 page picture book. And poof, there it is. So all that, all that content, what you're writing about, is actually organized. Now you never see the organization. Again, structure is totally invisible. But behind all the content is how the book is really conceived. Beginning, middle, end. Problem, action, solution. And in the beginning, you know what your job is in a, in a picture book. Characters, setting, story, situation. So if you have Ralph and Sarah as characters, the setting, if they're going to go to the museum, the problem, do not touch. If they're going to go to the grocery store, the problem, don't eat the food in the store. If they're going to go to the movies, please be quiet. And you're always working off of these basic building blocks of stories. Whether you're writing a novel, whether you're writing a short story, whether you're writing a picture book, it's, they all share the same inner structure. So elements that you don't think necessarily are the most powerful, like setting, you know, it's like, you know when you read a great piece of literature and you know who the characters are, obviously. You know what the setting is. You know the question that you're always afraid of from the teacher? What's the theme, right? Isn't theme so nebulous? You know, like, what's that mean? You're like, eh, I'm not going to answer that. I'm not going to raise my hand on that one, you know, because you, know, you always say the wrong thing. I go, no, it's man's inhumanity to man, you know, it's like something you never thought of. And so, Right here, setting is actually the glue. Setting turns out to be a major player in the elements, where I always thought it was like, just like a throwaway. But when you have setting, if you're going to go to your setting, the entire middle of the book takes place in the same setting. So they go to the museum, now you've got great setting. You've got the dinosaur room, then you can go to the painting room, then you can go to the gem room, then you can go to the sculpture room, then you can go to the tapestry room, the armor room, and, and it would be touching, 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 and we would see the theme on every page. 
you're thinking to yourself, oh my God, I'm hitting that over the head with a hammer every time. But your young reader, like a, a five-year-old reader, is going, I get that book. I know exactly what that book about is about. It's about do not touch. You know, and they really get it. Then you have the crisis. Then like any good book, you always have a double ending. Look at the character's feelings. Solve the problem. Emotional and physical ending. If that whole concept that you come down to one perfect ending, that's not real. So you come down to two perfect endings. Remember the interior and the exterior? You got to get them both. So if you if you leave out the emotional side, then we just have the physical ending. You know, like we take them out of the museum. So, you know, that's just not good enough. So you need to get the interior. 